Previously, we covered the strange but highly intriguing Cockno Stone, an extremely ancient and very large Scottish stone, covered with some of the best and most interesting ancient petroglyphs known in Europe. And although we put forward the preposition of it possibly being a map of as yet unknown star constellations, we were subsequently contacted by an independent researcher known as Sean Moriarty, who, with a small independent team, has been investigating the stone for quite some time, resulting in them deciphering the enigmatic cup and ring marks as a map of all the ancient sites within the surrounding area, including some yet to be unearthed. However, there is a little less known ancient stone, a stone which rests in North Carolina, deep within the mountains of Jackson County, and it has baffled all but a few who've examined it. Known as the Judicula Rock, it is a soapstone boulder covered with a plethora of strange petroglyphic drawings that archaeologists now believe to be over 3,000 years old. The native Cherokee Indians consider the site sacred and state that it's extremely ancient. The rock has been studied by researchers from across the world, but no one was ever able to decipher the bizarre petroglyphs on the stone, not even being able to connect them vaguely to any usual subject matter often selected for such ancient expressions. It's also cut using an unknown technique made by an unknown people. The stone sits at the base of a mountain that has a large vein of copper which runs under the site. With a variety of other rare metals and minerals present, this geological layout has often been used to explain the strange electromagnetic anomalies which can be detected around the rock. The League of Energy Materialization and Unexplained Phenomena Research, or LEMA for short, a team of highly qualified individuals who explore paranormal and enigmatic subjects, may have actually cracked the code, and their research is certainly the most compelling proposition so far put forward, or quite possibly will ever be put forward. In August of 2002, Lima investigated Judicula rock. Upon comparing Judicula's markings to microscopic forms, specifically microscopic pond life, some of which exclusively native to the surrounding landscape, an artistic relationship becomes undeniable. Modern academia, or indeed known history, states that man first saw microscopic creatures in September 1674. These observations were made by Dutch scientist Anton van Leeuwenhoek. That means humans have only known of microscopic life for less than 330 years. If this is true, who or what could have created the Judicula stone's markings over 3,000 years ago? Was this stone made by a highly advanced ancient alien? Was it made with the purpose of sharing their research with a local population unable of such work? To date, the Lima theory is the only one which has been successfully corroborated elsewhere. My mission upon this channel is to provide details regarding ancient ruins, artifacts and technologies that clearly demonstrate that there once existed lost, ancient, advanced civilizations that have been lost here upon our planet. My unwavering research dynamic is that said subject matter is crucially factual. Thus, it is always based upon that which I have personally sought to confirm as undeniable realities before sharing. I do not only offer an intellectual armory for you, the viewer, who is often confronted with many academic fallacies, but particularly the younger viewer, enabling their empowerment to correct academics, often ordered to pass on such fallacies through a permitted curriculum. As such, I feel that it is crucial that not only are the facts I share established proofs, but that features which they explain away as others work are established as beyond doubt as currently unexplainable, as such undeniable as the work of others. Exposing academia's lies due to our ancestors' limitations, ancestors often claimed as the constructors of said ruins found throughout the world. Due to this bestowed responsibility to only convey historical accuracies, established mystery, and ancestral limitations, many independent researchers often privately contact me via my secure armored email, often sharing not only their own controversial research, sometimes including their own expedition details, 
but also academics in positions of tremendous public influence, who not only share my view that much of the history, currently being taught to future generations, is not only inaccurate, but is based upon a conspiracy of concealing past civilizations. One such email received recently pertained to something known as the moon shaft. However, although this is not the main theme of this particular video, I will briefly cover what has been shared with me, and after further research, endeavor to do a detailed video in the future regarding said explorations if enough evidence of its existence can be established. Sent to me by Mike Collins, a member of an unsuccessful expedition to try to rediscover this mysterious layer, a brief prologue is as follows, quote, Three soldiers hiding from the Germans in the Tatra Mountains in Slovakia discovered a layer which could possibly be the oldest man-made structure in the world. The structure is believed to be between 300 and 310 million years old by a number of individuals, with Heinrich Himmler even sending several scientific expeditions into the Tatra Mountains looking for the shaft, with members of the KGB also attempting to obtain the diary writings on the experience from these deceased soldiers. End quote. Although compelling, I am reluctant to cover this story yet due to a lack of any physical evidence, regardless of the considerable lengthy testimonies that pertain to its existence, I intend to invest some time in researching it further myself first. However, tonight's subject originates far away from the supposed moon shaft in China. Ancient star maps of such accuracy and range that due to currently attested academic understandings of the history they simply should not have possessed such knowledge, let alone been able to accurately illustrate it upon parchment, known as the Dunhua star chart. The chart is the first accurate graphical representation of star locations within ancient Chinese astronomy, and it is of nearly every star across the atlas. According to modern academia, it is dated to the Tang Dynasty between 618 and 907, although I feel this is actually a copy of charts of a far earlier age, and thus of a far earlier, far more capable civilization. Before this map, much of the star information mentioned in historical Chinese texts was drastically inaccurate. However, this map provides a graphically precise verification of star observations and are part of a series of charts all known as the Dunhua Manuscripts. It seems, however, in an attempt to quell the curiosity of the astute among us, considerable funding has been funneled into constructing an excuse for its existence. This funded project is known as the International Dunhua Project, with much of the research and indeed exclusive access to the maps solely granted to these academics, which I believe is an attempt to convolute their importance. However, regardless of these tremendous efforts, there are many features of the map which remain unexplainable. Compelling evidence of them being Chinese copies of knowledge left over by a past, vastly more advanced civilization, copies of elusive manuscripts that at some point within Chinese antiquity were most probably found preserved somewhere. First, the Dunhua star map is to date the world's oldest complete preserved star atlas meaning that before the ancient Chinese were even a seafaring civilization, they somehow had access to knowledge of the accurately plotted star charts of both hemispheres. Additionally, the main image, which many presume is the entire Dunhua star chart, an insinuation implied by Wikipedia, is only a small fraction of the collection, yet this piece in itself is an exact accurate plotting of polar constellations and due to these ancient Chinese people being incapable of such tremendous voyages, not only does the advanced knowledge copied down upon these charts strongly support my posit of them being a rediscovered copied relic of a past civilization's knowledge. These copies were found in the early 1900s in a walled-up cave containing a cache of manuscripts. They were discovered by Chinese Taoist Wang Yuan Lu in a cave system known as the Mo Zhuao Caves. Although the scroll with the star chart was found amongst those documents by Oral Stein when he visited and examined the content of the cave in 1907, one of the first public mentionings of the script in Western studies 
was from Joseph Needham's 1959 version of the book Science and Civilization in China. Since that time, however, only a few publications have conveniently been devoted to the map, nearly all being Chinese publications. This map, or as we postulate, accurate copy, was made around the year 700. I feel their lack of public exposure and my reasoning for asserting that they were copies of a far more advanced civilization's work is not only due to the Chinese civilization's inability to travel to such locations to plot such charts at the time, but that the whole set of star maps contains over 1,300 stars. Not only proving that, although the Chinese are academically claimed to have believed the world was flat at the time, the star charts prove beyond doubt that they had knowledge of constellations from around the globe. The academic explanation for this is that although the Chinese supposedly presume the world was flat, they somehow assume that the heavens were somehow spherical, which to me just seems like a desperate attempt to discredit such manuscripts' true origins. I believe, due to the in-depth and accurate knowledge copied upon the star charts, much of which were far out of the reach of this ancient civilization's observational capabilities, be clear proof that they had discovered maps left by a civilization that was not only seafaring but global. Also, due to the chart featured on Wikipedia, had successfully explored the poles and accurately mapped its constellations. How did the ancient Chinese have such in-depth knowledge of so many constellations, especially polar constellations? We find such manuscripts, academia's funneling of considerable funding into the discrediting of their inexplicable nature and their lack of exposure as highly compelling. This is a, a great opportunity to see one of the kind of mythical sites of Scottish archaeology. The, the Cochno Stone is one of these sites that people have heard about, there's rumours about it, but very few people remember seeing it when before it was buried, and so to be part of the revealing of it is really exciting. The Cochno Stone is a large ancient rock located at West Dunbartonshire, Scotland. Measuring 42 feet by 26 feet, it was first discovered in 1887 by the Reverend James Harvey. Such a large stone, once sitting proud upon the surface, inevitably attracted people's attention for thousands of years. The stone features around 90 carved ancient images, considered to be one of the finest sets of ancient petroglyphs in the world. It was reburied in 1965 by archaeologist Ludovic McClellan Mann, who decided to bury the massive slab under several feet of soil to protect it from damage and to prevent people from adding their own modern carvings to it. In 2015, it was partially re-exposed for investigation during a three-day dig and a more complete re-exposure followed a year later. So far, archaeologists cannot agree on what is exactly depicted on the massive slab. Yet the images are clearly strange. Often when you discover that specialists cannot come to a joint conclusion, the subject is of a controversial nature. There is no consensus among archaeologists on the meaning of the intricate symbols found on its surface. Experts plan to digitally map the stone, and that data obtained could shine more light on its history. Its purpose and the people who created the artwork they believed lived more than 5,000 years ago. Dr. Kenny Brophy led the excavation and described the experience of seeing the stone as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Because of the array of markings on it, the Cockna Stone has been recognized as being of national importance and designated as a scheduled monument. Due to its unusual illustrations and the choice in shapes and placement thereof, Many researchers have come to the conclusion that the Cochno Rock could have been some form of star map. The mystery of its strange decorations will undoubtedly persist for many years to come. In the January of 1974, a man by the name of Duncan Lunan published an article called Space Probe from Epsilon Bootis. It concerned a mystery surrounding long-delayed radio echoes, or LDEs, first reported in the 1920s. Mysterious echoes of the transmitter's voice, which were far too powerful to have been simple reflections from Earth, experimenters studying all over the world found that their outgoing pulses were being returned to them with a delay of three seconds, as if they were being amplified and returned by something at the distance of the Moon, but definitely not the Moon itself. 
these delay times began to vary upwards from 3 seconds in increasingly complicated sequences, but with no variation in intensity, still indicating a single source amplifying and returning the pulses. Professor Ron Bracewell of Stanford suggested in 1960 that the echoes might have been rebroadcast by an unmanned probe from another civilization, a craft attempting to get our attention, and in 1972, Duncan would make an incredible discovery, successfully making a translation of the echo patterns. The variations of delay times appeared random, but Professor Bracewell himself had suggested that if indeed a probe, the first signal might be a star map. After plotting the delay times in chronological order, he found what indeed looked like a star map. Upon showing this to astronomers, it was recognized to have been a warped image of Epsilon Bootis in the constellation Bootis. Arcturus, the brightest star in the constellation, seemed to be out of place in the map, but on checking was shown at its plotted location within the map about 13,000 years ago. Predictably, the discoveries were treated as suspect and with great hostility by the academic community. Sadly, this pressure led to Duncan withdrawing his entire translation work and research. Did Duncan Lunan actually decipher the first message ever translated from an alien civilization? More research into this incredible echo anomaly is clearly needed, and the results of which released to the world. <laughs>